Good morning, gang. Happy Saturday morning. Okay, uh, before I get started, I just wanted to make everyone aware there will be no live stream tonight. I've got a meeting I need to attend uh, this evening, and I don't know if I'm going to make it home in time for the live stream. So in the interest of not making y'all wonder where I am, I figure it's just easier if we just cancel the live stream altogether and we'll get together on Tuesday. So, okay. Housekeeping out of the way. It's been a hell of a week uh, around here for me. Uh, not a whole lot of good news coming out of everything. Uh, culminated yesterday by a friend of mine losing a family member. And obviously that's not a, a good deal. So... Coping with loss, and it's something we all have to do, okay? I mean, two certainties in life, death and taxes, okay? We know that's going to happen. How you cope with it is going to be the death part, not the taxes. We deal with the taxes. How you cope with losing a loved one is something we really all should talk about, and I'm not talking about getting financial affairs in order, having a will, you know, or anything like that. No, I mean, those, I've talked about those before. We've discussed wills and trusts and how to pass on assets to children or your heirs, whoever it would be. Now, I'm talking about the mental anguish and the psychological effects of dealing with losing a loved one. It's tough. I don't care if it's regular, normal day life. I don't care if it's Armageddon. We all have to deal with it many times in our lives, okay? I mean, friends, relatives, God forbid, children, but that happens to people. We all deal with loss, and it's tough. It, I mean, the, the thing is, you need to continue on. Time marches on, all right? You're going to die. I'm going to die. Everybody's going to die, and somebody's left picking up the pieces and mourning us when we're gone. It doesn't make it any easier. And the best thing that I think that anybody can do is be there for that person who's mourning the loss of a loved one. I spent yesterday, I actually spent the last two days, uh, with my friend, okay, uh, knowing this was coming and trying to console them, trying to help them, trying to be there for them. You, you do what you can. They were an emotional wreck. Of course, I turned out to be in an emotional wreck. Yes, believe it or not, I do not have a cold black heart. Uh, but trying to ease the pain. And there's it, there's really nothing that you can do other than just be there for somebody. But how do you cope? And if we think of it as preppers, if we think about oh, I don't know, to families of, let's say, Lake and Riley or any of these other people that have been assaulted, raped, murdered by anybody, whether they're illegals, whether they're all the leftists who seem to be the only ones that commit all these mass shootings, 91% of them, at least, in the 20th, 21st century. 
we're all going to lose people somewhere. And yes, there's a time to mourn. But in an SHTF situation, that may be very difficult. And it's going to affect people hard. Because none of us know when we wake up in the morning if our number's up today. If today's the day God calls us home. We don't know if we're going to have a heart attack. We don't know if we're going to be in a car accident. Whatever. And a lot of times death comes as a shock. Okay, You know, the diet of natural causes, diet of old age, you don't hear that much anymore. I mean, we're you know, they died of cancer, okay? You probably knew you had it. But uh, what was it? Uh, there was a baseball player. I, was, I want to say it was Sean Burroughs. I saw the story this morning. He died. He's 42 years old. I mean, there's plenty of people that died there, too. But uh, coping with that, it's, it's something you can't prepare for. All right, you you deal with it as best you can, but the grief, the mourning, the loss is going to hit us all. Mrs. P and I talked about this for a while last night, you know, and I mean, y'all know I've I'm 11 years Mrs. P's senior. Chances are, she outlives me, okay, just mathematically. And you worry about that because I don't want to lose her, but she doesn't want to lose me. And unless you get a situation where both of you are in a plane crash or something like that, chances are one outlives the other. It's a topic we never talk about, but... In an SHTF situation, we're going to have to deal with it. If we go to war, whether it's World War III that Joe's hell-bent on getting us into, or whether it's a civil war, which Joe's actions are driving us toward, whether it's a blue versus red, a black versus white, uh, a left versus right, however you want to talk about it. Imagine what's going to happen. Put it this way. Imagine you are in Kenosha, Wisconsin a few years ago. And there's a gang of people that are coming down the street. And their intent is to kill you. And your intent is to defend yourself. They may succeed, you may succeed. But what happens if, in the process, your kid, your spouse, your friend, your neighbor is left on the battlefield? It's gonna damage a lot of people's psyches which is going to make them even more unpredictable and more dangerous on both sides. I mean, remember that, you know, we hear all these comments all the time, you know, of let's just use Stormy Daniels or something like this. She's somebody's daughter. She didn't make a whole lot of good choices in her life, but she's still somebody's daughter. And no matter what happens, somebody's going to be mourning, whichever side, you or them, somebody's going to be mourning and somebody's going to be pissed. It's something we don't think about. I mean, too many people think about, they glorify war, they glorify Oh, it's going to be, bring it on already. You see these comments online all the time. Bring it on already. N no. Okay. If 
most of us have witnessed death, okay? Somebody that we know has died, okay? Not a whole lot of people <clears throat> anymore <clears throat> can say they've witnessed death in a war situation. Seeing somebody die right next to you, die in your arms. I mean, sure, it could be the south side of Chicago. Uh, it could be St. Louis. It could be, you know, seeing somebody die on the streets like that, too. Not everybody's seen it. It ain't exactly pretty. You know, it's not a video game. You know, you don't die and hit the reset button and start over again. Once you're gone, you're gone. It's, you know, one and done. It's a conversation worth having. It's not a fun one. It's a conversation worth having with your kids, with your spouse, about dealing with your own mortality in a situation like an SHTF one. <clears throat> We're all going to die. I mean, there's no question. Hopefully, it's not sudden. Hopefully, everybody gets to live a full life. And when it's time to turn out the lights, you've made your peace with everybody and close your eyes and that's it. Not everybody gets that luxury. It's easier, easier, not easy, when it's expected. You have a time to mentally prepare it's still tough. But it's a lot tougher when it's sudden. Some of us may know getting that call in the middle of the night. Hopefully most of us don't. That something's happened. But I know it. Plenty of people that do know it. It's something to think about. It's something to talk about because if it happens for any reason, like I said, whether it's World War III or Civil War or car accident on your way home from work, make sure you tell the people around you often that you love them. Because it might help them in their grief, remembering that. Pinball out.